The four of us arrived in Manila late last night, and after a travel day of uncertainty that was caused by a powerful typhoon sweeping through the northern Philippines the previous evening. We weren't sure we were going to make it into town at all, but now that we're here, we're ready to explore the city's sights and bites. Today, we're going to sample the top street food in the oldest Chinatown in the world, track down some authentic Filipino food, swing by the largest mall on the continent of Asia, and see what our sprawling Bayfront Hotel has to offer in between. Let's start devouring. It's about time to head out, so we're gonna grab our bags, head downstairs, catch a taxi to the airport, and see if everything works out in our favor. Got about a 25 minute drive to the airport from the heart of town here. Monday midday, 11 a.m. So as far as traffic, We're on Scoot Airlines, which we haven't flown yet, so we have to go check in, show them our health declaration form, and make sure that our flight's on time. Hello. There's an issue with Brooklyn's passport for some reason, so we have to go to the counter. I hope it all works out. Brooklyn, we have a particular problem with your passport. We found out the problem. I guess when we purchased the tickets, uh, the kids were purchased as adults and they have to be specified as children when you purchase the ticket. So we gotta get that fixed and then we'll be on our way. All fixed and our flight is on time. That is just crazy. We are narrowly missing a typhoon as we fly into Manila. Uh, but we are gonna go through security, get some food before our flight. Even outside of Jewel, it's a really nice airport here. We've got Fendi shop, we've got Gucci, Burberry, Coach, Hugo Boss, Salvatore Ferragamo. Some good shopping right here. This is interesting and something we haven't seen yet. We're actually gonna go through security at the gate to get to our gate. Well, this is the first time we've flown anything outside of United or the Star Alliance in about two years, maybe longer. Yeah. And it feels weird. Yeah, and it looks like it's a full flight, so we're not the only ones heading to Manila. Um, and nobody seems to be worried about the typhoon that just rolled right through. They just made an announcement that the flight is delayed, but whew, nothing to do with weather. Cabin's just not ready yet. Well, we're finally boarding, so this might actually happen. Definitely over three hours late, because we were supposed to take off three hours ago, and they just started boarding. So I think we're probably not gonna get in until close to 10 p.m., and we are jet lagged from flying out to Asia still. Some of us are lucky enough to catch some seas on this plane. At least we get some dinner, which is great because then we can go straight to bed when we get to the hotel. And it's not bad. I think it's better than the U.S. flight food. We have just landed in Manila, and frankly, I think it's pretty amazing. 24 hours ago, there was a powerful typhoon crossing over the city, and here we are tonight actually landing here so that we don't have any disruption to our trip. I think it's pretty incredible. My eyes feel like they're so puffy and heavy. If you're so weighed down, it's really hard to open my eyes. <laughs> So transportation arranged by the hotel is only $54. I found that a lot of the food and transportation in the Philippines is really affordable. So that's a plus. And welcome to Bunder Manila. Thank you. Since we booked with Inspirato, we have free breakfast each morning, a hundred dollars resort credit. Oh, and we're on the executive level, so that has its own separate breakfast included, uh, afternoon tea, cocktails with the chef, and uh, complimentary use of the meeting room. Now let's go to the room. I cannot wait to go to bed. Oh wow, it's a big room. All right, we'll give you a full tour of this place tomorrow, but we're gonna hit the sack because we are absolutely drained and we've got 15 more days of the Philippines and we're gonna be taking you along for the entire ride, daily vlogging most likely, so please subscribe if you haven't already and follow us along. We've got some amazing adventures planned over the next two weeks. Good morning. We are ready for our first day in Manila, so we gotta get up. We gotta explore the hotel a little bit, and then we are going to head into the oldest Chinatown in the world, and we're gonna devour it. But first, let's head downstairs and devour some breakfast. Thank you, Doc. Well, I love this, that we booked with Inspirato. Uh, it 
puts us in the executive lounge area. So we have an omelet station, a really great breakfast, hot breakfast, and a beautiful view. And we can see how cool the pool is down there too. All right, that's very satisfying. We're gonna head back to the room. These kids have to do some school, and then we're gonna begin the day's festivities. It is so beautiful to see this lobby in the daylight, the views of the ocean, and then over here is the swimming pool. But we are trying to find the ATM so that we can get some cash before we go and do a food crawl. We're gonna head into the Bonando neighborhood, and there are two things that people really made us aware of when we said we were gonna go to Manila, and that's that the traffic is really bad, and that also theft is an issue. So we're gonna keep our belongings and our children very close by. I'm finding it very interesting that when you pull into the uh, carport here for the hotel, and it's an upscale hotel, they have security, and security even has the little mirrors on wheels things that they roll under the car to check for explosives and stuff. And then even when we showed up last night, going through, it's like airport security with the, the metal detector and the conveyor belt and everything. So that's, I mean, it's interesting and probably a little bit disconcerting when you think about it. I'd love to get a story about how necessary all of that is and why. We just got dropped off at the Bonando Church and we're gonna head deep into Chinatown here. It's where people go when they come to Manila and they are looking for a culinary and cultural adventure, just like we are. First up is Sincerity Cafe and Restaurant where we're gonna get one of their fried chicken dishes. We've gone back and forth on hiring professional guides whenever we go into new cities. It can be hit or miss and luckily we've had really good luck when it comes to the guides that we've used in our episodes. But some of the risks are sometimes they'll like take you to all the tourist traps. Um, sometimes they take you to places that offer them kickbacks. So unless you want to go to a bunch of jewelry shops and nothing off the beaten path, I mean, if that's your thing, fine. But otherwise, I think it's a really smart idea to always try to ask for a sample itinerary in advance. Make sure that the places are going to be local and authentic if that's what you're after. And make sure that they're not trying to pad it with some of their friends' businesses. Uh, but it's also an additional layer of complexity when we try to use guides for filming a lot of times because they want to really control the whole situation and we need more freedom. In this particular instance, we're just kind of going with the flow. Aaron did our research and just exploring and seeing where it takes us. This is supposed to be the best Chinese style fried chicken in town. And it's bone-in. Mm, that's really good. And it's in the batter. The batter has some flavor to it. This batter is delicious. There is some sort of seasoning or flavoring in here that's making it really distinct and different. Different than what I expected, definitely. Mmm, look how juicy. Yeah, that is good. I'm not the world's biggest fried chicken guy, but I could get used to this. Nothing but skin. What am I tasting right now? Yeah. Maybe the lime? Colt says maybe there's a little lime in the batter. Could be. So I tried. I asked what seasoning they use in this batter, but they can't tell us it's a secret recipe. It's gonna stay a secret. It doesn't look like we're doing a very good job of pacing ourselves today. We've got like 12 places to go. So let's hit it. This is such a, a cool little street here that is, it looks like a small market and a narrow street. Uh, but we're at New Peng. New Po Hang Lumpia House, and uh, we're gonna get Lumpia. I don't know what it is, so we're gonna find out in just a minute. This is just this little tiny stand here, but it's got all these articles that they've been featured in. Can we get one? What is a Lumpia? A spring roll. A spring roll. Okay, let's do one Lumpia. Yes. I love spring roll. All right, let's see. Ooh. Is this soy sauce? Whoa, look at that. This looks awesome, and this outer layer is soft. It's not crispy at all, so it's not deep fried. Let's see what it tastes like. Mm, that is delicious. This like It's like a crepe on the outside, and it has a little sweetness to it, which gives it amazing flavor. And I can't really tell if this is tofu or chicken, but I think it's tofu. So many vegetables in there. This is really good. Brooklyn, want to try a bite of the spring roll? Sorry, not me. All right. I don't know what you're missing about. Mmm. I feel like I taste sweet corn, 
but I don't see any sweet corn. But maybe it's just an association with really fresh summer vegetables because that's precisely what it tastes like. Phenomenal. It's streets like these and bites like that that really makes me love eating food and experiencing culture through the food. That was a really good bite. And now we're gonna go find a bakery. I bet you the kids are gonna want something there. Poland, Hapia, and Bakery. And I wanna point out, masks are required. So many places in the Philippines still. This is September, late September of 2022. You want to donut sticks? Ooh, donut those sticks. Those are like those crunchy donut sticks. What is inside these? What's inside a Hapia? Yeah. So this is a sweet pastry. Ooh, it's kind of like Donuts without a hole. Wow, here, Brooklyn's gonna try it first. It looks, yeah, it's got Philly, it's sweet. It's, it's kind of like a croissant filled with like cake with sesame seeds. And unless there's a language barrier and I didn't understand it right, it's made with pork lard. Yeah, I heard the same thing. Mm -hmm. mm, that is sweet, like a creamy sweet. Very subtle flavors. I would say it has a little similarity to shortbread. Good, mm -hmm. yeah. Approved. This is yummy. It's like shortbread because it's very, very dry. Tastes like it, but very dry. Need a glass of milk <laughs> or water. All right, let's see what's next. Uh, anybody in the mood for seafood? It might be a little too crowded, so maybe we do go to dumpling. Okay. okay. Best seller? Yes. Chopsticks. It's a little bit of an indication of what we're gonna eat. Also, soy sauce, another indication. Ooh, sushi? No, it's not gonna be sushi. It's going to be dumplings. Ooh, this looks good. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bite a little corner off. Oh, and now put it down there. Oh God, this is a real balancing act. Thank you, Brooklyn. These are pork dumplings. She said it was their best seller. Mmm, mmm. Yeah, it has like a lime. It was like pork lime flavored inside. That's really delicious. I love it. This is a phenomenal list we have so far. So if you're coming to Manila, follow this little guy. These are great bites. Mm. So good, babe, you gotta try this. Interesting. You think lime, huh? I do, I get lime. There's so much green in there, look. I don't think it's lime, I think it's from the greens. I think it's something like collard greens or something that have a bit of tang. Wow. Okay, what's next? It's so hot and humid here, we've gotta find something cool to get away from all of these really hot dishes. So I'm on a mission to either find some ice cream or some popsicles or at least some cold fruit. Yahtzee. Hello. Can we get one Oreo, one mango, and one melon? I got an Oreo. Yeah, yogurt. Milkshake. I think. Cold? Mango, thank you. And good. What is it? It tastes like mango with graham crackers. All right. This one is Phil's, but just to be clear, Colt did order a mango graham cracker. It's cantaloupe melon, not watermelon. Very refreshing, that hits the spot. Exactly what I needed. I did think it's interesting, when we ordered, they asked us to tell them how sour we wanted. We said regular. Ooh, yeah, it, it does have that little bit of sourness, which is kind of like um, a natural yogurt, how, how that's sour. Yours is really good, Colt. Colt's is super good. Mine is a hint of mango. Yours, it literally tastes like you're drinking a cantaloupe. Well, that was a well-needed cool down, but I think everyone else needs more of a cool down. So we're gonna go back to the hotel and check out the pool. Hey, thank you. The sun has gone down since we were outside walking in it, but it's still a beautiful view and a great place to hang out. This is probably the first time since we started off on this trip to Southeast Asia that we've actually sat down and relaxed and did a little bit of nothing. So I'm gonna savor this moment until we go back to adventuring again. All 10 minutes of it. All 10 minutes. What's up, Beanie? I am. Starfish. We didn't get to everything that we wanted to get to downtown today, uh, and I think largely because it was hot and humid, and it's just becoming increasingly difficult to do that. Actually, this is the closest we've ever been to the equator, so that explains a lot of why it's so hot. And uh, the Philippines tends to have warm weather all year round because of its proximity to the equator, but this is the hot and rainy season typhoon season as well, uh, all the way up until November, I think. So we're here a little early for the more well-rounded, milder 
hot weather. Oh yeah, good point. But also, actually, uh, Singapore would have been the closest because we're farther north of Singapore by a bit right now. Our hotel just happens to be right across the street from the biggest mall in Asia, Mall of Asia. And it also happens to have a carnival looking thing that the kids would not leave us alone about until we took them over. So we'll see what kind of rides they want to do. Mama knows! This boardwalk goes for miles and miles right along the bay here. And so you could just walk or bike or whatever. And that's where all of the carnival stuff is here. And the Mall of Asia lines this entire spot also. There it is, right here. Found it. Starting off with a carnival classic, bumper cars. In the United States, we would never expect to find a good restaurant in the middle of a shopping mall. But here in Manila, in the biggest mall in all of Asia, they have phenomenal food and phenomenal restaurants. In fact, they have the most affordable Michelin-starred restaurant on the planet, and we're looking for it right now. And check out all these Christmas lights. There are Christmas decorations everywhere. I don't know what that's all about because it's not quite Christmas time yet. It's still September. We are just having the damnedest time finding it. We've asked a bunch of people and there's a little bit of a language barrier, but uh, I'm gonna just break out the cellular. Language barrier, trademark. A little bit like a wild goose chase. We just keep walking and I guess one of the downsides to a mall being this big is that even the people who work here seem to have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> it says now open, so we're gonna try and see if uh, we can find it inside. We found it! We found it, guys. It's Singaporean food. We just came from Singapore. It's so trippy, they're playing Christmas music in here. We're months and months and months away. I thought the U.S. was bad. This is over the top. They're known for their soya sauce chicken, so that's what we're getting. It even says here in the tiny, tiny print, world's cheapest Michelin-starred meal. It's breathtaking to think that a place like this is essentially like quick casual, fast casual dining, and yet because of this one phenomenal dish, they have a Michelin star. This has to be some amazing chicken. Woohoo! Here it is. I'm so excited about this. I'm gonna have like a little bean, a little of this sauce. The soy sauce on top is really good. Soya sauce. I might have built this up a little too much in my head, but I'm not blown away. I feel bad. I'm gonna give it one more try. It's good, but my mind is not blown, and I'm surprised. It's like part of a drumstick here. That is tasty, but no more tasty than the one we make at home. I'm gonna try it on the pork rind. That's pretty tasty. That's not a pork rind. It's not? What is it? This is like rice. Air rice pop. Well, it's good with the chicken. That was the bite I wanted. That's the one I'm look, looking for. So that's it, the one little bite, because we have more that we're planning to eat tonight. But before we leave, we have to tell you how much it was, since it's the cheapest Michelin meal you can get. It's 168 Filipino pesos, which is only $3.15 in the US. Not bad for three bucks. Now we're at a totally different part of this huge mall because we wanted an authentic Filipino dining experience for dinner, and this is what we're they recommended. Here. We're not? It's closed for private event. <laughs> All right, we're going back to the hotel. Well, that's the way it goes. We're gonna have to have a different authentic Filipino restaurant experience on one of our other episodes, so follow along with us because we're just going back to the hotel now and getting some food there. But don't go yet because we want to give you a tour of this room because it's awesome. We have a nice little foyer and there's a powder room right there, a living room over here, so come this way. I love the decoration here because it doesn't feel like a hotel room at all. It feels like a contemporary apartment. Ooh, over here. This is where I have coffee. Nespresso's are my favorite. Love it when we have Nespresso's. So this living room is kind of where the kids are sleeping and they get their own TV. Uh, we get our own TV too with a nice king bed. The windows open up to the garden. Really long sofa couch. And down this way, it's like huge. So this is the vanity room, but we're using it as a closet staging area. This bathroom so big. Check this out. Woo! Shower, walkthrough, nice tub, and this is the toilet area. 
So that's it. My favorite part of this room, the bathroom for sure, because it's about the size of the rest of the place too. So please stick with us. Watch our next episode, watch the previous episode because we are going all over Southeast Asia, specifically the Philippines, island hopping around. So please come along on our journey with us. Hello. Where's your chicken? I ate it. <laughs>